The federal election came to a close with votes still being counted. Many seats have changed, with some new faces and other long-term seats being replaced. In the main battle, Anthony Albanese dethroned Scott Morrison to become the 31st Prime Minister of Australia. Young voters had a say on their future, with many first-time voters unsure of who they wanted to vote for, as politics isn't seen as a big thing for Australia's youth, with some choosing to go to online sources such as ABC's Vote Compass 2022. Yes, I did. I actually used this ABC app thing, which tells you which views, um, like, which parties align to your views, major parties. Despite the record number of pre-voters heading in early, there were still some that were unable to do so and had to head in on the 21st to cast their vote. No, I voted in on the, on the day. It was busy, um, however, they spaced everything out because of COVID. What I do find annoying is the picketers out the front that are trying to jam paper into your face, um, not thinking you know how to vote, considering that we do it every four years. Some people, however, were unable to have the privilege to vote, despite being Australian citizens. I did not. I'm not able to. So I'm an Australian citizen, but because I live overseas in Canada, I'm not able to vote because I've been out of the country for more than three years. In the local election for the District of Parramatta, Labor candidate Andrew Charlton edged Liberal candidate Maria Kovacic by roughly 6,000 votes. The community is waiting to see if the man from the eastern suburbs will deliver some of his promised policies. Richie Benno Oval is an integral part of Parramatta's history and only time will tell whether or not new MP for Parramatta, Andrew Charlton, will fulfil his promised $6.2 million upgrade of the field. Parramatta has a proud history of cricket. That's why a Labor government will invest $6.2 million to upgrade the Richie Benno Oval to create a new, modern, high quality cricket facility. Australians will have to play the waiting game in order to find out whether the newly elected members such as Anthony Albanese, Andrew Charlton, among many others, will be beneficial to them. I voted for Labor um, based on um, Anthony. I've met him before. He was very proactive in his approach, uh, handling issues, and from what he's, he's talking about, he's actually performing on and, and delivering at the moment. Well, I'm hoping so. It's been nine years of so let's see what happens next. Happier than Scott Morrison, yeah. <laughs> Will they live up to the promises and policies, or will it fall through like others before him? It's time for Australia to find out if it really won't be easy under Albanese, or if we're looking good for the next 12 months. Ricky Neal reporting for the RNN Roundup.